In this video, we're going to do a couple guided practice problems with pressure. To start with, I have a balloon, and it begins at one atmosphere of pressure, which stays the same. Outside today is about one atmosphere. That balloon is one liter in size, and it is presently 273 Kelvin. We're going to take that balloon, we're going to change its temperature. We're going to heat it up to 25 Celsius, we're going to heat it up to 75 Celsius, we put it in a really good freezer and bring it down to minus 40 degrees Celsius. For each of those, find the volume that balloon would be at. So go ahead and pause, give that a try, and come on back. All right, if you're back, let's discuss how we can go about doing this. There's two ways to do this. First, we're going to take this through the ideal gas law. And so I have a pressure, I have a volume, and I have a temperature. What I don't have is some moles. But I could find them. PV equals nRT. Rearrange. Move the R and the T over. My moles are going to equal my pressure, my volume over RT. So 1.0 atmospheres, 1.0 liters. For atmospheres, my R is 0 0.08206 atmospheres liters over mole Kelvin, and I was at 273 Kelvin. So I can find the moles that are in this balloon. What we find is that there's 0 0.0446 mole of gas. Well, that has to be true for all of our other situations. Our pressure outside isn't really changing. It's the, the Earth. And so our pressure is still going to be one atmosphere. Since it's a balloon, they'll match inside and outside. So at all these other temperatures, at 25 degrees Celsius, well, if I want the volume, I need to rearrange again. Pressure volume equals nRT. Move my pressure over by dividing it. My volume is going to equal my moles, 0.0446 mole. My R value, 0.08206. And my temp, which I have to account for, 25 plus 273 is going to be 298. So 298 Kelvin. All over, still 1.0 atmospheres. So I can find my volume at 25. And what I'll we'll find is it's about 1.091 liters. With, well, really about two sig figs. If I want to do this for 75 degrees Celsius, well, my plus 273, 348. My volume at 75 is going to be largely the same calculation, 0 0.0446 mole, 0 0.08206 for R value, and my temperature will be different, 348 Kelvin. Pressure is still 1.0 atmosphere. So my volume at 75 is going to be 1.27 liters. If I want to do it for minus 40 degrees Celsius, well, 273, so it's going to be 233. And really, it's the same calculation. You just change it to 233 Kelvin. And so my volume at minus 40 degrees is going to be 0 0.854 liters. So if I want to run this as, well, in the end, four ideal gas law calculations, by knowing the original situation, I can find those moles. I can use that as the moles for all the other calculations, and I can solve them each this way. There is a second way to go about this, however. If we think about the ideal gas law for a minute, pressure volume equals nRT. Well, R is the same for all of them. Didn't matter what pressure we were at. Didn't matter what temperature or volume. If I rearrange this so that R is equal to pressure volume over 
N T. Any real situation, any pressure, and the volume that it's at for the moles and that temperature are going to pan out to equal R. Well, this means that if I change some, which is what we did, if I change the temperature, well, my pressure was the same, my moles were the same, but my volume altered. As my pressure, as my temperature went down, my volume went down. We saw that at the minus 40. If my temperature went up, my volume went up. We saw that here at the 75 and at the 25. They cancel each other so that they still equal R, which means no matter what situation you are in, whatever your pressure right now is and your volume and your moles and your temp, it has to equal R. But if you change some of them, they still have to equal R, which means if you have a balloon that you heat up, all of the factors that it started with must still equal all of the factors that it ends with. Pressure one, volume one over moles one, temp one is going to equal pressure two over volume two, sorry, times volume two over moles two, temp two. They must be equal to each other. The same sample of gas is going on, and so whatever its initial state was as you change something about it, like the temperature increasing, well, that's going to change the volume, and so when you divide and multiply, they still have to be the same value. They still have to equal each other because they both equal R. This sets an interesting situation because say I want to solve for volume two which is kind of what we did. We had an initial set of info, pressure one, volume one, R, not R1, N1 and T1. And then we rearranged to find our later. All of these are volume two, moles two, temp two, pressure two. If I want to rearrange to solve for volume two, well, I need to multiply by the bottom, I need to divide by the top. We can rearrange to solve for volume two. The consequence of this though, is that if any of the things are the same, if any of our moles were the same, or if our pressure was the same, they would cancel. If you have the same number on top and bottom, they cancel out. Now, if you have an X on top and an X on bottom, they go away. Well, our moles didn't change. So N2 is really equal to N1. They're the same number. They were 0 0.0446. Well, that just means N2 and N1 cancel out. And our pressure, it was one atmosphere both times. So the starting and final pressure cancel out. Our pressure one was equal to pressure two. They were the same. Which means this equation really just breaks down into temperature two times volume one over temp one is equal to volume two. If we actually go and calculate that for one of them, 233 Kelvin, we'll do the cold minus 40, the original volume of 1.0 liter, the original temp of 273 Kelvin, all that has to equal volume two. And we'll find that it is 0 0.853 versus 0 0.854. So a little bit of rounding error difference between the two, but effectively the same answer. Because the moles and the pressure didn't change, they don't actually affect the calculation. This gives us a simplified version. If we go back to this, we can just set up that pressure one, volume one over moles one, temp one is pressure two, volume two, moles two, temp two. Anytime you have the same situation just altering, 
you can take this to compare them. It is two ideal gas law calculations, but it allows us to be a little faster about it. Instead of fully calculating, we can say, oh, pressure was the same, moles didn't change, what I really have is volume 1 over temp 1 is volume 2 over temp 2. What we found is we basically recreated one of the gas laws, that our volume and our temperature were directly related. If one gets bigger, the other has to get bigger. And so the ideal gas law was created from the individual gas laws, and we can see that evidence if we think about how they can rearrange a little bit. This can make some of our calculations faster, especially when we have a large number of them to perform. All right, let's do a second problem. Here, I have a large tank of argon gas. We're gonna use that gas to put a little bit of argon into light bulbs. Light bulbs are normally filled with vacuum with a very tiny bit of argon, at least the old incandescent bulbs. You didn't want a gas inside because those bulbs get really hot. It would cause the gas to expand and shatter the glass. But you didn't want nothing in it. If you had a true vacuum, which is almost impossible to do, other gases tend to seep in. And so by having a little bit of argon, A, you can use the argon to flush the other gas out, and it left a little bit of non-reactive gas around to help prevent having a total vacuum and problems that arise from it. The question, though, is how many light bulbs can we fill? And that is our goal. Find max number of light bulbs that can be filled by this tank. So go ahead and pause. Try to determine how many light bulbs we could fill with this much argon from this tank, and then come on back. All right, well, if you're back, let's think about this for a second. I've got a bunch of gas. So I have a tank, it has a ton of gas. What's gonna happen is it's going to leave and it's gonna go into a light bulb. And there's gonna be lots of light bulbs. And it's gonna have just a little bit in each. And while it might be going in light bulbs, effectively it's just filling a new volume. There's gonna be some volume where it's spread out in. I want it to be spread out such that at 294.15 Kelvin, it will be 3 Tor. Now each individual light bulb might be a tiny little circle of this, but my goal is I want to know the total number of light bulbs, which means if I knew the total volume and how big each light bulb is, I could say, well, how many light bulbs would fit in that volume? Since the gas has to expand to be at this temperature at 3 Tor, there is some volume it will take up. And then there are some number of light bulbs that equal that volume. So all we really have to solve is that volume. What volume is my gas going to have? So I have an initial pressure and volume and temp. And there's going to be some new pressure, some new volume, and some new temperature. My original container was 57.8 atmospheres, but I'm trying to get to Tor. So I should probably not use atmospheres. Let's do it in Tor. 57.8 atmospheres. One atmosphere is 760 tor. So that is 43,928 tor. So pressure one, 43,928 tor. Volume one was 12, and if we're gonna be in milliliters, 12,000 milliliters instead of 12 liters. And the temperature, well, it's already in Kelvin. 297.15 Kelvin. All that must equal our second pressure, which is 3 Tor. Some other volume we don't know yet. 
and our final temp of 294.15. If I rearrange and solve for volume 2, 43,928 times 12,000 divided by 297.15 times by 294.15 and divided by 3. Rearrange, we will find 1.739 times 10 to the 8 milliliters. This is the total volume. Question then is, well, how many light bulbs fit in that volume? Well, each light bulb was 158 milliliter. And so I have to divide this by the milliliters per light bulb. 1.739 times 10 to the 8 milliliters, and there's 158 milliliters in one bulb. This will yield 1.100 times 10 to the 6 bulbs, or 1.1 million. So how many light bulbs could that tank of argon have filled? 1.1 million. Now the reality is it didn't make anywhere near that much. Usually we don't put just a tiny bit of argon in, you flow it through to push out the other gas and then you pull a vacuum. You do it a second time and pull a vacuum. So we tend to use a lot of argon to flood the other gases out. But this is how many it could. This is the maximum number of light bulbs that could be filled with three tor at this temperature of argon gas from our original tank. Now we could have also done this ideal gas law. I know the original tank. And so PV equals NRT. I know my pressure, my volume, my temp. I could find my N. My N would have been my original pressure of 57.8 atmospheres. My volume of 12.0 liters. R0.08206, atmospheres, liters, mole Kelvin, and my temperature, 297.15 Kelvin. What I would have found is that the moles of gas in my tank was 28.444 mole of argon. If I then found the moles in the bulb, I would know how much gas has to go into each bulb. Well, that's going to equal my pressure of 3 tor, my volume of 0 0.158 liters. I'm in tor, so my R value is 62.36 tor liters mole Kelvin, and my temperature of 294.15 Kelvin. The mole in each bulb is 2.58 times 10 to the minus 5 mole. So I know the total argon, and I know the moles of argon per bulb. 28.444 mole of argon, and there is 0 0.0000258 mole in one bulb. How many bulbs will that give us? We again will find 1.1 times 10 to the 6 bulbs. So 1.1 million bulbs. Whether we do this using the ideal gas law to solve moles and say, well, I can figure out the moles in each light bulb and how many of those would add up to the total moles, or whether we do our simplified relations to just think about the total volume and how many light bulbs would take up that same volume, we get the same answer. Gas laws are remarkably variable in the ways you can answer them. There are multiple paths that will give you the exact same answer. 
Do you want to think about it in terms of moles of gas in the containers? Do you want to think about it in terms of volume and how many little pieces you're cutting that volume into? Either route will still return you the same answer. So as we do these guided problems, I'll try to show many ways that you can think about a problem. But it doesn't matter if you do it exactly how I do it. If you're obtaining the same answer, that's great. Gas laws have many paths that can be used to solve them. And here were a few for our study.